That's the Maiden Way snaking across the moors of the North Pennines, uh, making its way to the wall. But it stops off somewhere first, and that's where we're headed today. This is a local vlog for local vloggers. There's nothing for you here. <laughs> Hi there you guys and welcome to another video. This week I'm sheltering in a hut. It's supposed to represent a centurion's hut because the weather is against us once again. We are going to have a look at what is considered to be a one-off, a unique Roman fort across the whole Roman Empire. What I like about this place is it's run by the local farm and a society as opposed to the English Heritage uh, or National Trust organisations. So there's no interactive signs or soft play areas with a loose Roman theme. What I also like is that the signage refers to the place by its proper name, Epiacum, and not the ridiculous Whitley Castle that later peoples called it. We've also got a bit of controversy, and YouTube loves a bit of controversy, helps with those likes and subscribes. When the uh, early archaeologists in the, uh, around about 1810, I think it was, uh, did have a look at the site, they found a fantastic Roman altar. I'll try and put some sort of overlay up to show that, if I can find a picture of it. Uh, and uh, that still exists to this day, but where is it? Well, I can tell you, it's in Bedford Museum. Now you can tell us what you think about that in the comments down below, but perhaps we should start a sort of a Elging Marbles type campaign to have it brought back here and installed in the farm shop uh, at Epiacum. The moles do sometimes uh, turf things up here, but there's been very little real exploration. There's been some geo fizz and Stuart Ainsworth, who is famous uh, through his role in Time Team, is a great supporter of the site. Although he's a bit of a competitor to the Roman Gazette these days since Time Team has come back on YouTube. Now, amongst the unusual things about Epiacum is the shape. As you will probably know, most Roman forts are shaped like a playing card with rounded edges. But here, the fort takes a parallel, a parallel, a para, a lozenge type shape. And they think that's because the Romans just had to work with the shape of the land. But the real unique feature of Epiacum is its defences. Hopefully you can see on some shaky GoPro footage that there are these series of incredible banks uh, uh, defending the, the fort. And this is unique. There's not another one like this across the whole of the Roman Empire. It's a great little unpretentious thing they've got going here, so much uh, better than the National Trust and uh, English Heritage do. There's a nice little Ancient Roots Trail leaflet that you can take, although obviously we don't need that because we've thoroughly researched everything. Now, why was it so well defended? We are in the land of the Brigantes, and after initially colluding with the Roman occupiers, the Brigantes ended up being crushed by them. So maybe the straggling remnants of the Brigantes caused ongoing problems. Right, well, the weather is not getting any better, so we'll just have to go and crack on with it. Back at the studio and having looked at the footage, I've decided that the best way forward with this vlog is to create a Roman Gazette B-roll. Q B-roll.
Because of the difficult conditions today, one of the things I forgot whilst out recording was to let you know that Ptolemy in his geography tells us that this was the first major town in the region of the Brigantes. Possibly that helps to explain the massive defences. Hi guys, this is like the early days of the channel. I'm filming this on my phone, uh, on the back camera actually, so I'll need to reverse that in post-production. Uh, but apart from that and the mic, I have managed to rig up the mic. Apart from that and the GoPro, all the rest of the kit is in the car because I'm facing horrendous conditions today. High speed, uh, winds and driving rain. I had so much planned for this. We were gonna have the fake drone, some amazing cinematic footage but once again I've been scuppered by my uh, decision to film the Roman Gazette in the winter. I've retreated to a Bastille house, uh, a Reavers house close to the fort to try and rescue this shambles of a video but this is not the Reavers Gazette so we won't be talking anymore about that. Now, one of the things I just wanted to add uh, to this video is about the name Epiacum. It's believed that once again, the Romans incorporated the name of uh, a previous tribal leader, Epius, Epium, something like that, a Brigantes tribal leader, uh, into their new name for the fort, creating that sense of continuity, whilst at the same time leaving everybody in no doubt about who is now in charge. We saw that, didn't we, at uh, Silchester uh, with Caliva at Trebatum, I think it was. I hope you enjoyed that vlog despite the technical difficulties that we encountered. So I need someone out there to start the campaign to get that altar returned from Bedford, maybe a crowdfunding campaign, something like that. Our new Chinese editing people this week uh, have assured me the ending is gonna be fine. But before I go, I just wanna say, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, and apparently it helps me. So until next time, stay. Hey, do you know why Julius Caesar's mobile phone bill was so high? Because he was Roman. Doesn't really work. <laughs>